Hi everyone. Well, it's been a long time since I've made a video. Um, during that time, I've moved a couple of times and had numbers of changes in my life. But I feel it's time to get going again, at least for this particular message. Um, right now, it's May of 2021. And uh, since my last videos, which were uh, focusing on Jewish roots, uh, things have changed in this world considerably. Um, wherever you are in the world watching this, you're certainly aware of the COVID-19 um, pandemic or epidemic and the effect it's had on everyone everywhere and, um, and consequent uh, fallout from that. It's impacted every area of our lives, not just in terms of health and uh, lockdowns and what it's done to our social lives, but um, economically and spiritually and, and psychologically and in so many ways it's impacted everyone. And uh, so this is going to be different. It's not going to be a teaching today. It's not going to be Jewish roots. Um, it will be um, on point with uh, the purpose of this channel, which is seeking the kingdom of God. And uh, so it's really about sharing a revelation. And this is something that God uh, first began to unfold to me actually probably a couple of years ago. Uh, for some strange reason, I didn't journal it, which is unusual. So I don't have the exact date, but I'm sure this goes back you know, probably at least two years. Um, and uh, it, it began in um, uh, a certain insight and revelation that God gave me and then developed that a little bit more fully. And then he's added to it and unpacked it more over time. So I think today, just to keep this video short, um, I will uh, just talk about the initial revelation a little bit. I won't go into a great deal of detail and then maybe follow this up with another video where I'll unpack it and teach it and give um, more insight into what, how we can respond and what we can do about all of this. So um, from several years ago, I knew that we were heading into a season of shaking. And uh, there's a scripture in Hebrews 12 when it says, once more I will shake the heavens and the earth, um, basically so that everything that uh, can be shaken will be shaken, and only the, the things of the unshakable kingdom will remain. And uh, so I began watching for this and expecting that you know, we were going to see God begin to do some things, or at least allow some things to be happening. Um, then, as I said a couple years ago, he gave me a specific revelation. And uh, one day he just said to me, I'm going to begin withdrawing my light from the from the world and um, and you will see increasing darkness. And immediately I thought of Isaiah 60, probably you have as well. And this has been a scripture that has been very significant to me all my Christian life. And uh, I don't think we've ever seen it come to pass in fulfillment of uh, prophecy. And I would encourage you to read the whole chapter, but I'm just going to read from the word um, the first couple of verses. So it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And then it goes on to um, develop how this is going to uh, look, when this happens, the Gentiles shall come, or the, you could say the nations, uh, all the ethnic groups shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see they gather together, they come to you, and so on. So like I say, I encourage you to um, read that more fully. But uh, basically, what God was saying to me at that, that initial time was... Um, there's a lot of people in our society, and some of them even are in the church or appear to be in the church, that are kind of in a gray area. And I would say 
morally in a gray area in particular. And so you wouldn't call them outright evil. They certainly don't think of themselves that way. But we wouldn't call them uh, like fully uh, born again and disciples of Yeshua. They're not following the Lord with their whole heart. They're in this kind of gray area of compromise, sitting on a fence. They're, um, they're neither in nor out. Now, uh, for the world, the people that are in the gray area, um, probably a lot of them think that they're good people. And, um, and some of them may have lives that appear to be good. Um, but in their hearts, they're embracing immorality in various ways. Um, as an example, we could say they might um, be sympathetic to abortion. Uh, they would just feel, well, it's, the, it's the, the tolerant, the kind thing to allow a poor woman who didn't plan a pregnancy, maybe she got raped or, you know, she's an unwed teen, um, to end that pregnancy and to do otherwise would be uh, to be very intolerant. And, um, and you get people that are very tolerant of the LGBTQ lifestyle. that It's not something they themselves necessarily are in, although they could be. Um, but, uh, you know, they just feel, oh, well, you know, here's a person that's conflicted. They were born one way. They identify as something else. Uh, it's uh, loving and compassionate to just embrace that and allow, uh, allow them to have the life that they choose. So these people that I'll call in the gray area, yeah, think that they're okay. They think that they're in the light. And, um, and so they've embraced a lot of darkness. And uh, so what God is saying to me is he's going to begin to withdraw light from the world because the darkness is there, but he's going to allow it now to be so blatantly dark that it will seem, um, even to these people in the gray area, to be very disgusting and revolting and evil. And, um, and then these people that are in the gray area will begin to reject that. The, the, the dark will just become too revolting to them, and they will begin to reject it. They'll turn away from it. And if you can kind of see them here, they're toward the darkness. But as they begin to turn and go in the opposite direction, we would call this in, in the Hebrew, teshuva. It's repentance. It's turning away from and returning. What, what are they returning to? They're returning to the light, which is God. So initially they may not realize this is what they're doing, but it is actually going to be a turning away from the darkness of the evil of the world and a turning to the light and repentance. And um, so it, it's going to result in um, that gray zone, that gray compromising area to just go away. And what God had said to me is that these ones that are turning away from the darkness toward the light, that's going to be the great harvest that, that we're all waiting for. Uh, Jesus said to the disciples at the um, occasion of witnessing to the Samaritan woman in John 4, uh, lift up your eyes for the harvest is great and the workers are few. And so we're in that kind of a season where there's a great harvest coming, and uh, we need to be aware of that. So just to go on a little bit further with this, um, I began to um, look into the Isaiah 60 passage and begin to unpack it from the Hebrew a little bit. And I found that there are two words for darkness. Uh, there's one where it talks about uh, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. And in Hebrew, there are actually two different words. So the, the darkness that covers the earth is actually darkness that is formed 
more by the withdrawal of light. So that's exactly what God has been telling me. He's going to withdraw the light from the darkness. And, um, and this is going to allow the darkness to become even more obvious. And of course, we know that our definition of darkness is the absence of light. The other darkness that covers the people is um, it's like a gross darkness. And um, if you unpack that word from the Hebrew, it's like sort of like a curtain of gloom that just falls down like like gloom and murkiness uh, like a, like a dark veil that just falls down and covers everything and uh, so the two very different words but both are going to be happening and um uh, and as I was looking at Isaiah 60, the Lord said to me, what do you see? And I studied it for a moment and I said, well, I see the darkness and I see the light because it says the rise shine. Um, I see the light and the glory, but there's no gray area. And God said to me, that's right. He said, the dark will become so dark and the light will become so light that um, people will have to choose. There'll be no more of this waffling, this fence sitting, this murky, compromising gray area. People are going to have to choose which they are, which they are in. And it will be a time for decisions, and it will be a time that the church can capitalize on this season. Um, I'm sure you're ahead of me in thinking about that already. We need to really look up and see what's happening in our loved ones' lives uh, that are not in the kingdom yet, in our neighbors, our co-workers, um, everywhere people are turning away from the darkness. Now, I found it a little bit troubling uh, to say the least, I thought about this darkness being withdrawn from people and um, and these people that would, you know, seemingly be lost and they would continue to go in the direction of the darkness. And some of the people in the gray area, that's what they will choose. And I think it's in the book of John where... Um, uh, it says uh, something along the lines of uh, they rejected the darkness uh, because they hated the light and the light was not in them. So there are some people in the world that are wicked people and darkness is what they choose. And uh, then from there, God began to speak to me out of the book of Romans. And I won't unpack that in a lot of detail. But again, it might be something that you've already thought about. And uh, it's where it talks about um, those who uh, began to worship the creation instead of the creator. And we see a lot of that today with the environmental movement. It's become a religion to some people. And, um, and their thoughts have become darkened, uh, professing to become wise. They've become fools. They change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. And they began to worship that. And God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. So then it goes on about men with men and women with women and doing the things that were um, unseemly and against nature. They didn't retain God in their knowledge. So God gave them over to, uh, some scriptures will say, a reprobate mind. Um, you could say a debased mind or a deranged mind. And this is kind of like um, when Moses kept going back to Pharaoh and saying, let my people go. There were times when the Bible says that Pharaoh hardened his heart, but then other times it says God hardened Pharaoh's heart. So it was kind of a joint thing because Pharaoh had that hardness of heart, God gave him over to it, and he just began to withdraw the light and any grace from him and gave Pharaoh over to his own wickedness and evil. So this is going to be the outcome for some people, sadly to say, but it will be a choice that they will be making. And um, as much as that distresses us, and we certainly see it in the world around us now, we see choices in the political arena, we see many things going on in the world, which I won't enumerate in this message, but... Um, 
that God is giving people over to the darkness of their own minds. And uh, and I certainly have, had, have noticed that. And it's been a bit overwhelming at times. But what the Lord is saying to me is that um, this is not a new thing. He's not bringing darkness. He's withdrawing light from the darkness so the darkness can be seen for what it is. And um, in seeing it for what it is, um, it, again, it's going to turn people away from it. But the darkness has always been there. It's just uh, becoming more obvious and more intense. Um, uh, I think finally I'll, I'll just conclude this message by um, uh, just adding to this that in that first time that God spoke to me about all of this, um, you know, I think I must have said, like, well, you know, what can I do? How do I respond? And God said, be the light. And I think that's what I would leave you all with today. Be the light the light. Um, again, in Isaiah 60, it says, Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So it's for us to arise and shine. As God withdraws the darkness, if you know your physics, uh, light doesn't, um, it's, as a form of energy, it doesn't disappear. It doesn't just go away. It can change its form or it can, you know, relocate. So as God removes the light from the darkness, it's available. I believe that there is more light available to come into us in the church and arise up in and through us. And I would just encourage you to press into God for that. This is the season of God's pouring of glory upon the church. He, he wants the glory to be seen upon us. So in the same way uh, the people in that gray zone will be rejecting the darkness, they will turn to us when they see the light of God in our lives. Um, even though we may not have said a word and they'll begin questioning us, what do you have that's different? Um, how can I find it? And that will give us an opportunity to share the gospel of the kingdom and uh, what Yeshua accomplished for us on the cross and accomplished for them. So uh, God bless you. It's been really good to connect with you again. Um, as I say, I'll probably post another video before long and unpack this in more detail uh, with greater, um, uh, more scriptures and more in-depth teaching and uh, how we can respond, a little bit more detail on that perhaps. But uh, I wanted to share this because I find every time I do share it, people are really blessed by it. I think a lot of us um, are having trouble maintaining a proper perspective. We see the news around us, the fear around us. Um, things just seem to be going from bad to worse, and they seem to be getting darker. But uh, that's what God told me was going to happen. And um, now that you've heard this, uh, you know, perhaps it will help you to handle the season a little bit better and even capitalize on it. So God bless you. We'll connect again soon. Take care.